we're going to look at a channel strip on the API console, starting with the famous 550AEQ. Now this is a three-band semi-parametric equalizer. It has cut and boost, and it has frequency. Um, it's semi-parametric because you can adjust the Q or the bandwidth of the frequencies that you've selected. So if I want to do plus 4 dB at 12.5 kilohertz, I now have what's called a peak EQ. So I'm boosting 12.5 kilohertz by four decibels. If I want to make that a shelf, meaning 12.5 and everything above, I select the high shelf. Now that's boosting 12.5 and everything above, that's a shelf. If I wanted to cut 4 dB at 100, I'm now doing so with the peak EQ function. If I want to make that a low shelf, meaning subtracting 4 dB at 100 and everything below, I select the low shelf. You'll also notice a filter button. That's a bandpass filter. Now that was designed for film. That was actually designed for a mag stock, for actual film magnetic stock. Uh, make sure that's not on. You probably don't want that on. And the middle frequency, the mid-range, from 400 hertz to 5,000 cycles, that is uh, only a peak EQ. You can't make that a shelf. That's set as peak. Moving down the console, you'll see the next thing is the submaster or the buses. Now there's eight buses there, so if I wanted to assign a channel to a track or a series of channels to one track, I would hit the buses. If I want to hit bus A, I've assigned those tracks uh, to, to the very first bus. Now say I had a bunch of horns or maybe some toms and I wanted to pan between the buses. Say I'm going to make three tracks down to uh, one stereo track, so I'll assign it to A and B. And now I can pan between the buses by hitting the pan button. So you can assign uh, several channels to two buses, a stereo bus. I could do the whole drum set that way. I could take all the mics from a drum set, assign them to a stereo uh, bus, A and B, and then I can adjust the panning using the pan button. Uh, the next button that you see is called stereo. So the stereo button routes the output of the channel to the stereo bus, or to the master fader, or to left and right, uh, or to the speakers if you're monitoring the stereo bus. So the channel can be on, but it's not being sent to the stereo bus. I'm gonna send it to the stereo bus now. If you had a microphone in these channels, microphones, and you were sending the signal to Pro Tools and recording it, you probably wouldn't want to monitor the mic signal and the Pro Tools signal, so you wouldn't have these in stereo. The channel would be turned on, but you wouldn't be monitoring the mic preamps, so you can shut those off. And I would be monitoring those back in Pro Tools. The direct button sends the output of the channel directly to the corresponding multi-track input. So channels 22, 23, 24, if I hit direct, now directly go to track 22, 23, 24. I don't have to do any patching. It will go directly there. Next on top of the pan is a level control. Now this is the level for effect sends three and four, or for sends three and four. So if I want to adjust the level, I engage three and four. And that's my send for three and four. Now that's going to be post fader send. If that's uh, if I'm mixing, I likely want it post fader. If I was using that signal for some sort of monitoring, I would probably want it pre fader. To do pre fader, you hit the pre button. That makes all the sends pre fader. Uh, however, when you're mixing, generally you want that post fader. Um, next to that, you see two black filter buttons. These are high-pass filters. Um, number one is 100 hertz high-pass filter. One and two is 60 cycles. J 
just number two is 200 cycles. So that's a high pass filter. It passes the highs and cuts the lows. It's also called a low cut filter. So it cuts 200 and everything below. The uh, next thing you see below it is the mic trim. Now you want to keep this down as much as possible. You may need to bring it up to get your level set. Um, so if you have the fader at unity gain, you should start with this as low as possible to avoid noise. Uh, if you need to bring it up, you can bring it up. That's the mic trim. Uh, below that, you see two yellow. These are cues. These are cue sends, and these are generally used for headphones. In the in the master section, the headphones are are you can see settings there for Q1 and 2. So I could make one stereo mix with Q being left, Q1 left, Q2 right, or I could make two mono mixes, Q1 a mono mix, Q2 a mono mix, and the black select between pre and post. You want to have those black buttons in pre. If you're using these for headphone sends, you definitely want them in pre. Um, if you were using these as a send for mixing, then you'll want those in post, which would be up. But for, for headphone applications, those should be pre-fader send, pressed down. The next button is a solo button. Solo shuts everything else uh, off in the monitors, and you just hear the what you've soloed. You can solo several things together if you want. Then is a phase reverse. So if you're uh, recording, say, a snare, you have a one mic on the top, one mic on the bottom. The two mics might be out of phase. You have to hit this, this phase reverse. That flips the phase by 180 degrees. Next is the mic selector. So this is a split console. It's not an inline console. So the channels are either mic or line. So I've set that to mic now. Below that is a pad control. The pad control cuts minus 20 dB. Generally when I'm recording, I will, uh, if I need the pad, I'll have the trim all the way down. And if I still need the pad, I'll put the pad on. Uh, if I'm recording something really loud, like a kick or a really loud guitar amp. Although I may listen to the pad on the console and then listen to the pad on the microphone that I'm working with. A lot of microphones have pads. And maybe the microphone pad sounds a little better for what I'm recording than the console pad, something I check out. The on, this turns the whole channel on or off. So I can shut the channel off and it won't pass any signal with this button. Below that, you see a knob labeled echo. This is really a cue send for uh, sends one and two. And then I have to press down the one and two buttons to engage it. Again, if you're mixing, you want that in post fader send. Uh, if you do want it in pre fader send, you hit the pre button. But normally when you're mixing, you'll have that in post fader send. A little further down is the fader. Now there's a, a, a little blue a little uh, dot, pardon me, between 10 and 15. That's unity gain. You would think that unity gain is zero up at the top, but that's not unity gain. You're actually boosting gain there. So when you're setting a mic, you want to start at unity gain there and have your uh, mic trim down as low as possible. So that is unity there. And that's a complete uh, API channel strip.